Thank you so much. It's such a great honor to be here. Um, when I came to live to this, in D.C. Um, five years ago, one of the joys was that I can now closely work with Code Pink. So, um, <laughs> yes, because I remember in 2008 when we were all terrified about war, a possible war, and I came here to present a book which was a response to reading Lolita in Tehran called Jasmine and Stars, Code Pink was here. When in St. Louis we had panels to talk about that same fear, Code Pink was there. So thank you all for being here, and it's a, it's, a, it's a delight. I'm trying to not speak too much and let my poem speak. Um, it's called Cowboys and Iranians, and, uh, and the only thing I need to say is that it's inspired by a, a, an anecdote mentioned in a wonderful book called The Limits of Whiteness by uh, Neda Marboulet. If you haven't read the book, please do. It's an amazing book, particularly second generation Iranians really need to read that and their parents. Um, so, but the name and the diner and everything that I refer to are all fictive, so. Cowboys and Iranians. Let us play cowboys and Iranians said the sign in front, of the Dwy in front of Dwyer Denton's diner in Cartland, North Carolina. It had been there since the days of American hostages. It's good for business, thought Dwyer every time he looked at it, complete with an effigy of a turban man, a noose around his neck. The sign had brought business to the neglected area. For about 40 years, Iran had gone from central to a marginal villain and back in the center again. Had the sign continued to be good for business? There was no harm in keeping it, Dwyer had thought. Dwyer, wherever in the world you are, and whoever's neck is the symbolic target of your actual news, Iranians, Mexicans, Jews, Blacks, Muslims, think again, because it is not good for business anymore. It is not good for business, not if business includes staying alive, enjoying some measure of peace and dignity, and letting others do the same, even if the others are Mexicans, Jews, Blacks, and Muslims, or Iranian cancer patients terrified that sanctions will stop them from getting their chemo medications. Dwyer, some of us have a radical idea. We can all live together. No matter how different we may look, there are ways to translate ourselves into stories in the book that tells the tale of our struggles. There are worlds we, to connect when we extend our arms. There are stories to tell each other that nooses know nothing about. Dwyer, Wherever in the world you are, listen to me. And if what I say moves you for one second, let me borrow your childhood self, the 10-year-old Dwyer Denton, for one day. Let me show you places you will not see otherwise. <clears throat> you want to know something about me? I grew up in the city of Shiraz in Iran, famous for its cypress trees, poetry, roses, and wine, in a middle-class family much like any other. Now I live in D.C., a Muslim, a teacher, a feminist, a seeker of peace and justice, a woman, a poet, and a target for your sharpshooting cowboys. Although I love American diners, I cannot visit yours. The thought of a noose around any neck scares the daylight out of me. 
Did you know that I shared your 444 days of anguish when the American hostages were held in Iran? I know that that tragedy hurt you. Do you know that it hurt me twice as much? Once because I feared for their lives and once because I felt responsible for the whole thing. It felt as if I should have been able to stop it, even though I was a poor college student in England. For over one year, I went around the weight of the world on my shoulders. Are you surprised? Please don't be. I have American friends who feel exactly that way every time America's war machine goes into action and kills in the name of democracy or something in that vein. I have American friends who feel the weight of the world on their shoulders when that happens. I've seen them cover their faces in their hands when on the safety of our television screens, buildings go up in smoke in Baghdad, Fallujah, or Kabul and people, bloodied and bare feet, run amidst the horror of falling bombs. You see what I mean when I say we are translatable into each other in ways that nooses do not understand? Will you now let the 10-year-old you hold hands with the 10-year-old me to connect our worlds? Places that you have not seen, places that I dream of every day. My childhood house in Shiraz, the walnut tree we used to hide behind to surprise each other. My favorite stores that sell Persian cookies. And the covered bazaar in the old city where the strong scent of spices will make you giddy. The bazaar is always crowded. We must walk behind my mother in lockstep. We must hold on to the hem of her chador, the surest way not to get lost. Mother's chador, brown with small flower prints that make it playful in the wind, I still hold on to it when I feel lost. Inside the house, I show you my small room filled with happy and sad things, pendant the pendant my favorite uncle gave me, the dresses I do not enjoy wearing, my bad grades on spelling tests. We hear my parents arguing in the hallway. I did not plan it that way. But so what? Your parents must argue sometimes. Father can be very unreasonable and mother too stubborn to let him get away with it. In the yard, you're fascinated with the persimmon trees. The before you look at oranges, look, mother has stepped out into the yard. She's walking towards the main door, so is father. They're not argue, arguing anymore. That is my little sister, fairy. She looks happy. Is it healing time already? Quick, Dwyer, we must jump into the taxi with them or we'll be left behind. Where are we going? That's easy. The mausoleum of Hafez or Saadi? No, it is not grim. In Shiraz, everything leads to visiting Hafez or Saadi or some other poet, especially if it's healing time. Saadi is my favorite, full of funny stories that even a 10-year-old can understand. On the big blue door to his mausoleum, it says, and I'm proud to be able to read it to you, from the earth that holds the body of Saadi of Shiraz comes the scent of love. Even if you come to it a thousand years after his death. Neither of us knows what the scent of love means. Now I know dictionaries do not either. Inside the mausoleum, you're shocked with the explosion of color. Geraniums are everywhere, and there are cypress trees, and around the rectangular pond, its floor covered in shiny coins. I'll take you down the steps in the left corner of the yard to the edge of an underground stream filled with silvery fish, 
so filled that water cannot be seen. There's breadcrumb to feed the fish. Back in the yard, parents are strolling near the pond. The air is lighter. Father is whispering a poem under his breath. Smiles are back in earnest when Bastani dishes are in front of us. In the famous creamery next to the tomb, Bastani Saadi. Saadi ice cream. Garnished with cardamom seeds and pistachio nuts. Could this be the scent of love? Back in the house, I showed a tall jasmine tree climbing the south wall, the one grandma waters every day after her morning. But our time is over. We must grow up and out of this poem and go our separate ways. But you must, you must trust, as I tell you, that the people you met do not smile that much anymore. They are the longest held hostages in history. For the past 40 years, they have lived in the shadow of war and sanctions, dreading the American war machine. The options on the table, the prospect of being obliterated, for the past 40 years, they have not worried about what most people elsewhere worry about. Instead, they have watched food disappear from their grocery stands, medications from their drug stores, their passenger planes deprived of spare parts fall out of their skies. It could be worse, they comfort themselves. Look at what happened in Syria. And they soldier on with their house chores, art exhibits, school, school works, TV shows, book fairs, charity works, and poetry readings. For who wants to live without art, silvery fish, ice cream, and poetry? The closest you can come to the scent of love. No, Dwyer. Angry cowboys, nooses, and war machines know nothing about the business of life. They cannot eat ice cream or feed the fish. That sign is not good for business. Take it down.